Okay, this is just going to be a quick run through of some of the best practices and lessons learned that we've come up with with raising solitary bees, orchard mason bees, and leafcutter bees. And um, I'm just going to start by pulling out one of the bee tubes. And uh, you see, we do definitely line the holes with parchment so that you can take them out. This is what it looks like when you open it up. There's a uh, purple bougainvillea and red rose and there's poppies in there too and then they pack the end of it with lots of little leaf cuttings so people talk about having a bee block or a bee box we've uh, decided to go a little bit bigger and we have a bee tower the awesome bee tower it's got 50 holes the easy thing about this is it's just a piece of wood that you get at Home Depot it's lumber you have to use untreated lumber of course if you find lumber that has all the little rows of parallel lines uh, drilled into it or, or punched into it, that's um, treated lumber. It's pressure treated, like they use for making decks. You absolutely can't use that. You have to use just clean, fresh wood. Otherwise, you might as well just go ahead and spray Raid directly onto your baby bees and be done with it. So the good thing about this is you can just go to Home Depot and very often in the lumber section they have pieces of lumber that are imperfect uh, and you can just buy them for not very much money like this one you can see here has this bit that's taken out it's not a perfect 4x4 four four. so I think I just gave him five bucks for it and then I went to another aisle in Home Depot and I got these brackets it was another five bucks maybe and then a bag of cement fast setting cement they make post hole cement you just pour it in and put some water into it. You don't have to mix it up or anything. It's designed just to be used with post holes. Um, so that's five bucks for that. So the whole thing is basically 15 bucks. And then I just drilled some holes. You want to be sure that you use a nice clean drill bit. You want to have a good... Uh, here. Sorry, I'm doing this all with one hand. Have a good clean fresh drill bit. So okay, yeah, maybe that's another five bucks at Home Depot. You want to be sure it cuts a good clean hole with the right diameter. Um, different kinds of bees have different kind of diameter holes. Uh, we basically just do all of one kind. We used to mix it up, but we found that we were basically getting all the same kind of bees anyway. So you can look up on the internet what different sizes of diameter holes. You get different species depending on how big the holes are. And really interesting, I think, you get uh, the gender, the sex of the bees is different depending on whether um, you drill a deep hole or uh, a shallow hole. I think if you drill, drill a deeper hole, you get all females. In a shallow hole, you get all males. So the piece of lumber I got here is not all that deep, so we're probably not getting that many females out of this. Um, but we like to support the bees, and it's always fun to come out and just uh, when we see one that is completely full, packed with flower petals, we do like to take it out so that the one who's in the inside dormitory room doesn't have to chew his way all the way through all the other egg chambers uh, to get out. So when we see one that's full of flower petals, we do go ahead and pull it out. Uh, you absolutely have to line the holes with parchment um, because otherwise you're basically just setting up a, uh, a death trap for bees because, you know, if you don't uh, have a clean lining, here's one, let's see what's in there. Again, you can tell they really chose the red uh, flowers, mostly bougainvillea and rose. And then at the end, of course, they did the thing where they packed it in with lots of little flower petals. They really worked so hard on this. So, as I was saying, lining the holes with parchment is really necessary. Uh, you can see it does get stained, and then that's just clean parchment that I put in there. So if you just leave the hole there for them to nest in season after season, you get mites and mold and spores and fungus and earwigs and spider webs, uh, all of which we've seen in there, and parasites. Plus, you don't want to leave this thing up year-round. Uh, this is California, and so we have a, a dry season and a wet season. And when the rains start coming, I do take this down, and I pour a, a, a bleach solution into the holes 
5% bleach solution to sterilize it and let it dry in the sun for a couple days. Make sure it's absolutely dry and then I wrap it in plastic, just saran wrap, you know, cling wrap for, from the kitchen and put it away for the winter and then take it out again in the spring. Uh, and every couple years I do drill out the holes again with uh, the fresh drill bit. It does take care of any spores and fungus and mites and stuff that are in the holes. Uh, and if you uh, do the drill at high speed and let it, the drill bit linger in there as you're really drilling it, it does get pretty hot. So that also helps to kill whatever is in there. Now, if you didn't line this with parchment, I would have no way of knowing if there is a bee uh, still in there. And I would hate to, you know, sink a red hot drill bit directly into a bee nest and pulp some poor little bee larva. That's not what this is about. So. Uh, you want to definitely line these holes with parchment. That was one of the main mistakes that we made when we first started doing this. We had a bee block and we just left the holes there year after year, season after season. And it was basically just a death trap for bees because after a season or two, any bees that nested in there were just, you know, subject to all the parasites and mites and, and mold and spore and fungus. Um, and so we were basically just creating a killing chamber for bees. So you got to use parchment. And let me show you how that's done. It's super easy. You can just take a pen or, uh, <clears throat> or a drill bit. I'm going to use this drill bit here. Parchment paper is really easy to find. It's in any grocery store. It's in the same aisle as they have wax paper and um, um, aluminum foil and saran wrap, plastic wrap, sandwich wrap, that kind of thing. Do not use wax paper. You can't use wax paper. Wax paper will uh, keep the moisture in there and it'll be too humid. It'll get damp and it'll create a, a condition for mold. So this is just plain parchment paper. They use it for baking. You can, you know, bake cookies on it, I guess, or I, I think I've seen doing poultry so it doesn't burn. So it's a very common thing. Obviously, you just want to cut a piece off and go with the curl. And I just use a, I'm using this because it's, you know, I was drilling holes a little while ago. So one thing you do want to do is whatever you're using to roll the parchment, do clean it with some isopropyl alcohol, just rubbing alcohol. That's $1 at the dollar store. Make sure you clean it. You don't want to have any machine oils or, or your human hand oils that are inside the egg chamber. So I'm just going to roll this up just like you're rolling up, well, I'll say a cigarette. Sorry, I have to put my hands down for a second. Okay, once you get it started, it's super easy. And just twist it around. So now you have a clean roll of parchment. And then I'm going to put it into the hole and twist it as it's going in. Just twist it until you reach the end. And then here's the trick. It's sort of a scroll. It's in a spiral. So you sort of wiggle it in the opposite direction as you're taking it out and that makes the spiral expand to fill the hole. And here's the most important part, I think. Tap it until it hits the very back of the hole that you drilled. And you can hear the difference in the sound when it hits that back. That's really important because you don't want a bee to be um, creating an egg chamber that's at the end of the paper but still within the wood area of uh, the hole and then when you pull it out there's an egg chamber still stuck in there there's a bee nest still stuck in there so you want to be sure that your hole that your uh, that your bee tube goes all the way to the back and then I just pull it out just a tiny little bit and you snip it off with scissors and then when you push it back in it goes all the way flush you can also see I scorched the holes I just have a butane burner but you can just use a regular lighter obviously get the wood so that it's facing down and then you have the lighter uh, you know going up with the flame and sort of just scorch that if you can do scorch the outside something about the look or the color or the contrast or the smell but that does seem to be something that they like now I'm going to do just one more of the rolling up of the parchment because it's really important I can't stress enough how important it is to uh, put that parchment line each of your holes with parchment and like I said I think you know we've generated some bad karma for all the years that we just had a bee block or we had one of those bamboo it was just a bunch of bamboo tubes that someone gave us from a gardening store and we just left it out season after season and uh, I'm sure that we killed a lot of bees just by you know creating basically death chambers that invited them to lay their eggs in a you know a, a hole that had mites and parasites and fungus so this way you can line it with clean parchment see how easy that was just to roll it up and then I'm going to put it in the hole here 
And then remember, sort of twist it spirally in the opposite direction, you know, to open that spiral. And then listen again one more time. You can hear as the paper's going in. Um, again, I'm just using a drill bit because that's what I had, but you can use whatever, you know, a, a magic marker or a pen or, or even just your finger. But you can listen as it hits the back of the hole, it makes a different sound. You can, you can hear, I don't know if you can hear that too well in the video, but it starts to ring a little bit, it's not so hollow. And then again, you just pull it out just a little bit, crop it. So um, I guess one more thing is make sure that your post is oriented, your B tower, uh, the mighty, mighty B tower is oriented east because they want the morning sun to be coming and hitting this. Don't leave it up year round. Don't leave it out in the rains uh, during the winter and the rainy season. Sterilize it when you take it in. Um, uh, they say 5% bleach solution, that's kind of hard to do, but if you think about it, 5% is uh, 120th. There are 25s in 100. So if you take, like, say, I don't know, a shot glass and fill it with bleach, and then you put that in a mixing bowl, and then add 19 other shot glasses of just plain water, now you have 20 shot glasses. 19 are water, one is bleach, and it's a 5% bleach solution, and I just pour that in and let it sterilize whatever spores are in there. Let it dry before you put it away, like really dry, like three hot days in the sun before you put it away for the winter. Um, and I just have these lag nuts down here, so it's super easy. I just unscrew those with the, the drill and take that post in, wrap it in plastic, make sure that it's clean and fresh and spore free and parasite free and fungus free. And then we bring it out again uh, in the spring. So here are some tools of the trade for uh, running a successful bee biz. Uh, parchment paper, you'll find it wherever you get wax paper. Do not use wax paper. Definitely do not. Looks like this. It's just Reynolds, you know, like they make aluminum foil parchment paper. Looks like that. It's not wax paper. You cut little pieces of it, you roll it up like this, like we showed before. You got the scissors uh, to cut it. Really helps to have tweezers to pull the bee tubes out of the holes. They're really hard to get because you want them to go flush. And we do keep our bee tubes, in our bee uh, nests inside, just in a little mason jar with a mesh on top. It's just a little piece of mesh like that. We don't screw it down tight. And then every morning when we come out in the kitchen for coffee, we check if there's any bees buzzing around. And very often there's a beautiful little golden bee that just emerged. And sometimes you get to see them actually chew their way out, which is pretty special. So we do unroll these parchment scrolls. And then I, I recommend pulling apart the um, egg chambers, the different egg compartments because think about it, uh, this was the one that was first laid and if he comes out first or she will have to chew his way all the way through all of that. So, oh and if you ever find one where you unroll a, a parchment tube and, and one of them is all wet and sticky or mushy, it's been compromised, it's been parasitized and there's horrible, um, you know, that actually looks like, that could be bee poop or that could be mites. Um, wow, oh here, I did not expect this, but even as we were talking, a swallowtail butterfly just hatched out. Even as I was doing this video just now, that wasn't there earlier. We've been raising swallowtails too. It's just fennel, and they just grow like crazy on the fennel outside. We bring them inside to um, hatch them. So again, you can see how this little bee tube is composed of many different egg chambers. And I'm going to try to separate them. You can see they come apart. They should come apart. We call them bee cartridges because it's about the size of a 22 bullet casing. And a bee comes shooting out the end. It's like a bullet. So, you know, bee cartridge. Sorry this video is so jerky. I'm having to do this all one-handed. So if you try to pull them and they don't come apart very easily, don't force it because, you know, there's a little baby bee inside there. And you, you don't want to squish them. Um, so we bring them inside, try not to jostle them too much, just put the little mesh thing over it and then every morning come out in the kitchen for coffee, see if anything has hatched overnight and lo and behold, even as we were talking, a little swallowtail came out. That's pretty cool.